on today's video, we got some crazy camcore stuff uh, to make you aware of, just stuff to be on the lookout for. So stay tuned and we're going to get into it. We got some pictures and examples and all kinds of stuff. All right, so I had uh, so I had one cam come in. It was the profile was a little bigger than they wanted it to be, and they wanted me to to uh, bring the duration down a little bit. <clears throat> so, and it's a small base circle, small block forward, which I still don't understand. And we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Then I had another guy same week. Uh, email me pictures and he's like, Hey, is this normal? And he has a 980 base circle, small block Chevrolet. So I'm assuming he's got like a four inch stroke crank and a small block Chevrolet. So they had to make a small base circle. So, um, and <laughs> both of these cams are ductile iron cores and they have machined them down. So let me just, so this forward, I mean, you see how small that is, how small that base circle is up here. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just thing that, and if we take to, to illustrate, so you see here how far away the lobe is from the journal, right? So traditionally the lobe, the tip of this load would be about 10 thousandths clearance, roughly. So, so I didn't even pay it any attention. So the core, the core came in, the core came in. I just cracked the box open. Yes, cam, chunked it to the side and, uh, till we got to a small block forward so I could fix it. Right. So it only had like 45 minutes runtime on it. I don't know if they dynoed it or I don't remember all the details, but it's, it, it's relatively small. I mean, it's like two twenties and they wanted like down in the two teens, uh, apparently some kind of truck bill. I don't, I don't remember all the details, but they wanted it about 10 or so degrees smaller. So I, I get it out to get ready to do it and I'm inspecting it uh, because there was no known problems. So I'm, I'm inspecting it and I notice that it looks like a billet cam till, you, let me see if I can get this thing turned right. So you see all this right here? So that's a casting. And then up here, you can still, um, in here, you can still see it's cast. So what they have done, um, and the, the distributor gears, be, so, so what I, I just look, I look at all the biggest thing that I see <clears throat> when people send cams in, cause nobody ever pays it any attention is the distributor gear. So many people send cams in and the distributor gears eat up. And so it's pointless to regrind the cam with a eat up distributor gear. I mean, cause it's just garbage at that point. So the distributor gear was eat up on this cam. And then I looked and I could see the casting. So they've took a ductile iron cover and machined it down that small for a small base circle forward. Now the thing that, I have not come to any kind of uh, understanding. So this is a chance for the internet to uh, fix my ignorance. People sell small base circle forwards. People call me and want a small block forward with a small base circle. And the first thing I ask is why? Why do you want a small base circle forward? And they say, well, you've got to run a small base circle with uh, factory uh, drop-in type lifters. And I say, why? And they say, well, I don't know. That's what everybody says. So we took, unfortunately, I don't have a set of retros in my hand, but I did have two different brands and two different brands of drop-in um, dog bone type lifters. We set them side by side on the wheel 
So the what I had heard multiple times is the oil band is in a different place on the lifters. So I put them side by side, several sets, and they're all identical. Absolutely identical. So I said, well, heck, maybe the oil gallery is in a different location on a roller block and a non-roller block. So I just so happened to have a roller block and a non-roller block, and I measured from the cam center line in the block up to the gallery hole through the lifters, and it's the same. So I cannot find a reason to have a small base circle fold. Uh, if you know the, if you can solve this mystery, uh, do put it in the comments because I, I mean maybe. Right. And, and, and I had one cam company, I'll get a load of this, right? A cam company told me that you had to run a small base circle because when it uh, lifted the uh, lifter, it would uh, push the dog bone up. So the lifter didn't have enough travel. So I asked them, I was like, well, whether it's got 300 lift on the lobe or 450 lift on the lobe, the top of the lobes in the same place. So how can it, how can it lift the lifter higher? And it was silence. And then they didn't know they, they just, well, I, I don't know. That's what would, uh, okay. So again, there may be a legitimate reason to make a small base circle fold. I just haven't seen it. So if you know, let me know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in some pictures of this guy's uh, cam. So he bought, paid a bunch of money for it. He bought a, a custom grind hydraulic roller for a uh, small bay circle Chevrolet. He assumed that it was a steel core, but he didn't ask or specify. Having said that, he shouldn't have had to. Uh, nobody in their right mind would take a ductile iron core and turn it down to a small base circle and then grind a big, huge profile on it and ship it to a customer. I don't know what kind of people do that, but the only so ductile iron cores are absolutely perfect for nice street hydraulic rollers with a full-size base circle. Uh, small base circle stuff, it, it's already moving around with a steel core. With an iron core, I mean, it's just, it's even worse. So, um, the, this this just a no-no uh, doing that. But again, if you're going to have a small base circle, you should have a dedicated core for that. I mean, that was built, purpose built with a small base circle from day one, not something that you took that was a standard base circle and you just mowed it down to a small base circle to make it work. That's not, that's not how it's done. So, uh, let's look at these pictures. So, all right, so you can see how big, so this is, this is the fuel pump lobe, first journal fuel pump lobe, and then uh, the first exhaust lobe. And you can see how much that they've cut out of that spool to be able to uh, barrel, would be a better term, how much they've cut out of the barrel to, to be able to produce the base circle that, they're, that they ground it to. Um, and so, again, this, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but the issue is, I mean, you pay whatever, almost five hundred dollars for a camshaft. Uh, you, 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 you want it to be what it's supposed to be, not, you know, this cobbled up mess that's not ideal for. And this is like a, a big horsepower deal. I mean, I don't remember if they said. He, you know, they felt like it was going to make. I mean, I think it's got really good heads. Um, 
rockers and stuff. So, you know, I mean, they expected it to make, you know, 600 plus horsepower. We got, you know, a, a iron camshaft. It, it's just not ideal. So, and I've never seen people uh, passing this stuff off like this. I mean, this is new to me. I've never seen it before. Um, th this is the core that this is the core that he got that they cut down. And I mean, you can see how big it is, you know, and I mean, it's nice and rigid uh, and it'll make a perfectly good street hydraulic roller, but I wouldn't put 400 load lift on it. I, th I think that's what his is, is like 390 or 400 load lift. I wouldn't put 400 load lift on this thing. Well, number one, you couldn't unless you went in there and whacked it all out, you know. Um, but again, when you whack it all out, I mean, it's iron. It's, it's just, there's no rigidity there, you know. And then you'll mess around it's going to break in the motor. And then when it breaks in the motor, that's going to be a train wreck because it's going to hit rods, wreck a bunch of more stuff. So uh, I believe... And they wouldn't give him his money back. So I'm pretty sure that when he recovers from that purchase, we're going to do it a, uh, a steel billet for that application and uh, and get him out of that mess he's in. But like I say, I haven't seen this before. This is new, um, but two in the same week. I just thought it was worth mentioning because, I mean, that's crazy that, you know, you're going to pay full price for something like that, you know, and they're charging a premium for it on top of that. Um, that's just crazy stuff. But, but yeah, if anybody knows the answer on this, uh, on this, uh, small base or small block forward stuff, I would love to know the answer because I ain't, I ain't seen it yet, but uh, maybe these, obviously maybe there's something I'm missing. Um, but you know, there's so many old wives tales out there. I just, I just have to believe that it's an old wives' tale, and uh, and just it, it has just been perpetuated. Uh, but again, I could I could be wrong. So, uh, but like I say, just be aware of that kind of nonsense is going on, and uh, you don't you, you know. I would say when I ordered a cam, if it was me and I was ordering a cam, I would want to specify whether I'm getting a steel or a cast core, and if I'm getting a steel core what grade steel is it because all of that matters and to some extent the higher the grade of steel the more the cam is going to cost maybe not everywhere but you know uh, a 8660 core is going to cost more than the 5150 core i mean a 5150 core will do most normal stuff but if you're doing you know solid roller drag race stuff, especially if it's like a big block Chevrolet down, uh, smaller, you know what I'm saying, size wise, you're going to want 8620 or 8660 um, just because of the size of the can. When you get up into LS's, and big block forwards and FE forwards, and that kind of stuff, Hemi's, it's not nearly as important because the core is so big already. It's big and rigid and heavy, <clears throat> so it's not. You can run 5150 in those applications without any trouble. But when you get, you know, uh, same thing, a big block Mopar, um, big block Chevrolet, uh, small block Chevrolet, small block forwards, uh, they're pretty good size. Um, so generally, they're not too big a deal i don't see too many issues with small block forwards so you know but, but the the bigger stuff you can get by with a lot less the smaller stuff you you need uh, you know premium materials all right so hopefully that helped thanks so much uh check out the website if you need anything pilotmachineinc.com we'll see you on the next one